So just after the Civil War, the United States was still a young country. Territories were becoming states, and states were being subdivided into counties and townships. Counties were still forming in Michigan, and the decisions on where to locate the seat of a government were sometimes hotly debated between the small municipalities. The politics of these county seats could get a little out of hand at times. In northern Michigan, the little town of Manton became embroiled in a heated competition with a nearby town called Cadillac. And these two towns competed pretty intensely for the county seat. So much so, they called it the Battle of Manton, and it's a very amusing piece of obscure history. I'm Chuck, the channel's Restless Viking. Let's explore this crazy story. So Manton and Cadillac, Michigan are two towns in the northern Lower Peninsula. Cadillac is about 10 miles south of Manton. In 1880, Manton had a population of about 214, and Cadillac was a growing lumber town of about 2,200. This all happened in a recently formed county called Wexford County. Wexford was established in 1840. It didn't have enough of anything to be organized as a proper county until about 1869. And in that year, the first county seat was established in a little town on the Manistee River called Sherman. Back then, the timber harvest was pretty much the only reason to establish a town around here. And Sherman was able to send its logs down the Manistee River. So the only growing town was Sherman, and it became the county seat. But that all changed in 1870 when the Grand Rapids and Indiana Railroad finished their line through a village called Clam Lake, which today we call Cadillac. And a couple months later, through a settlement called Cedar Lake, today known as Manton. And because they could transport logs and receive supplies by rail, Manton and Cadillac became the growing towns in the county, and Sherman was kind of left in the dust. This is when the founder of Cadillac, a man named George Mitchell, started advocating that the county seat be moved to the town that he established. So the towns of Sherman and Cadillac fought over this county seat for over a decade. And it's often described as a time of corruption, bribes, brawls, and drunk county officials. The historical records even hint at the creation of illegal townships to gain votes. And we thought today's politics were corrupt. But in 1881, Sherman and Cadillac compromised and they gave the county seat to Manton. But then a year later, a new vote was taken to move the county seat to Cadillac. And this was a contentious election. Some townships even reportedly destroyed their ballots in protest, but the vote really was firmly in the favor of Cadillac. That evening, Cadillac celebrated with bonfires, brass bands, and drinking. And it seems that Manton felt swindled and they were fighting mad. They even threatened legal action. And that was that, except it wasn't. There was the issue of county records and property kept in the courthouse in Manton. They had to be brought to Cadillac, but you can be sure that nobody in Cadillac was going to bring the records to them. So the sheriff, he seemed to be a little keen on getting this transfer done right away. And at dawn the next morning, a train departed from Cadillac for a 10 mile trip up to Manton. On board was the sheriff, 20 apparently specialized deputies, and the story goes that the train quietly rolled into Manton and stopped about 50 feet from the courthouse. And waiting for them was a man named T.J. Thorpe, the county clerk who unlocked the courthouse for the gang. He was a bit of a subversive who had just moved from Cadillac to Manton. And for the next half hour, the sheriff and his deputies carried documents and furniture and county property to the train from the courthouse. All that was left were three heavy safes. The posse started to move the big safe from the treasurer's office, but by now the activity drew the attention of Manton residents. And here's where the story diverges, depending on where you were from. Cadillac says that over 200 Manton men gathered and threatened violence. The Cadillacers beat a dignified retreat back to the train, which quickly departed. And if you were from Manton, a few brave Mantonites gathered at the courthouse to confront the Cadillacers, who were heavily armed. The safe was tipped over, a drunk county clerk threatened murder, and firearms were brandished. Nonetheless, the brave Mantonites drove the invaders back to Cadillac in fear. When the train returned to Cadillac, they were greeted by a cheering, growing crowd. But when that crowd found out that three safes were still in Manton, they started mobilizing a second incursion 
And here's where the story gets good. Judge Holden Green of Cadillac called them the first volunteer regiment, Cadillac, Michigan. The sheriff, his deputies, town officials, half of Cadillac's Main Street, and a couple hundred lumbermen and handmills. They had 50 repeating rifles, ax handles, crowbars, and clubs. John Turner, the <coughs> undertaker, armed himself with a broom. They loaded themselves a barrel of whiskey and some private bottles onto the train. The mood was reported as jovial. Then, the Marks Comedy Company brass band joined them and they headed to Manton. Yeah, that's right. They were joined by a brass band. So the train arrives in Manton, and again, there are two versions of what happened next. According to the Cadillac side, they numbered 300. The sheriff sternly cautioned against violence and destruction of property. In Manton, an angry mob of residents and farmers from miles around awaited them. There were claims of an attempt to hang the mutinous county clerk, and Manton women had greased the rails with lard so the train couldn't move. Manton's version is that an unopposed invasion by a drunken mob of five to six hundred men, led by a drunken sheriff and clerk. The courthouse was destroyed and the Cadillacers roamed the streets like a pack of crazed hounds. There were no reports of what the brass band was doing. The safes were loaded and the mob returned to Cadillac. Officially, the courthouse was damaged. There were injuries. Two Manton men had serious injuries. It was an intense confrontation. The incident even made national news and Cadillac didn't fare well in the court of 19th century journalism. The Detroit press called the town the wickedest place in the Midwest. Nobody died and no shots were fired. For sure, the story has been embellished over the years and we'll most certainly never know the full facts. It's taken on many versions over the years and I consulted quite a few sources for this story and interestingly, each town still seems to have their own version of what happened. One thing we do know, that undertaker, <clears throat> John Turner, who armed himself with a broom, he filed a claim with the county board for a broken broom handle, and the supervisors authorized a 30-cent reimbursement. I'm Chuck, the channel is Restless Viking. Thanks for watching, and go have some fun.